Welcome everyone to episode 18 of the Hanlon Nurse Chronicles. I am your host, Dr. Lori Laws. I am a nurse and author and a trauma burnout expert. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the functional freeze and how that is affecting millions of nurses worldwide. If you're just joining us, you may not be aware that nurses are exposed to a trifecta of trauma in their personal and professional lives. We are exposed to the individual traumas, uh, just as everyone else, the acute traumas, the chronic, complex, developmental neglect. So all of that as nurses, that we experience that as every human does. And then we are exposed to two more trauma layers. There's the unavoidable trauma exposure that is, well, quite frankly, it's just part of being a nurse, such as that vicarious trauma where we suffer alongside those in our care or trauma from disasters. But then the trifecta, and this is this is the one that's driving nurses out of the profession in droves, is the avoidable trauma exposure that is often secondary to healthcare system and organizational inadequacies, such as unsafe practice conditions, lack of resources, or too high of nurse-patient ratios. So according to polyvagal theory, we adapt and respond to traumatization in one of four manners. We go into either a flight, a fight, a fawn or a freeze. Now today we're going to center on the freeze and more specifically the functional freeze. So to understand freeze though, we need to understand how our neurophysiology through a process known as neuroception assesses threats to our safety, real or perceived, in both our outer and inner world realities. Dr. Stephen Porges coined the term the threat detector for this process of neuroception. And your threat detector, well, it's on duty 24 seven and it has one job and that is to keep you safe. And if it is determined that you are exposed to too much stress or trauma or experiencing a traumatic event, it will signal for one or more of your circuits to come online in sort of a dimmer switch fashion that is appropriate or commensurate with the context. So let's talk a little bit about those circuits. First, we have the, the ventral vagal circuit, and this is the ventral vagal aspect of the vagus nerve. And it comes online when conditions are safe. We can see the big picture we can um, be grounded and open and we are optimally in our critical thinking and clinical judgment and we're able to optimally connect with others within ourselves and with others. And so this is where most nurses need to be to provide patient-centered care, right? But there aren't a lot of nurses right now practicing in their ventral vagal circuit. What happens is that we go into a sympathetic response that is natural to meet the normal stressors of nursing practice in daily life. But then what happens is we go into this sympathetic overdrive. And this is when the stress or the traumatization or the trauma exposure is so great that the threat detector picks it up as danger. And it signals for the sympathetic nervous system to come online and then ramp up and ramp up and ramp up. This work, the, the sympathetic nervous system, it works great for short-term bursts of stress, like running from a saber-toothed tiger right? The classic example. But it is not built for the type of stress that nurses and healthcare professionals are experiencing on the regular. It's not built for the prolonged stress and the avoidable nurse-specific traumatization. And so what happens is we go from that sympathetic response into sympathetic overdrive that is all hands on deck and we are burning through our energy reserves and the mitochondria are 
working as hard as they can to, to keep up with the energy production that is needed to manage all of this to the point that the mitochondria can no longer keep up. And that's when the threat detector is like, whoo, we got a problem. There is not enough. We don't have the capacity. There isn't enough mitochondrial capacity, among other factors, to withstand all that is happening. So the threat detector signals for the freeze response. And that's when the dorsal aspect of the vagus nerve comes online. And it comes online after we've exhausted our sympathetic nervous system's ability and our mitochondria's ability to adapt and respond. And so it comes in to help us conserve energy. It starts shutting us down. And so this this is like we, we feel like we're on the couch and we just can't get up. Like I have 10,000 things to do on my day off. I have all these household chores and I need to do my bookkeeping and my finances. And I have plans with friends and family members and all the things that I want to do to live a full and healthy, vibrant life. And I can barely pick up the remote control and just binge one show after another and then feel guilty why I can't even do one load of laundry. Well, that is not due to a character defect. That is due to the um, it's a trauma response. It's that dorsal vagal circuit coming online to protect you. So you might be wondering, how does the freeze response work? Well, when we get partially shut down to conserve energy and disconnect from the trauma exposure, we can lose the ability to wholly communicate or respond in ways that we normally would. We might get hot or cold. There could be a heaviness in the body. It feels for many like you're walking through quickstand, wearing a heavy wet wool coat. The freeze comes into play when we cannot escape our current conditions. Like, like a possum who is playing dead in the face of a predator. Or a child who cannot fight or leave an abusive parent to seek safety. Or... The freeze response can happen to a nurse who is being forced to practice in unsafe conditions with unsafe nurse-patient ratios for a prolonged period of time and then is threatened with their job or their license if they refuse to accept an unsafe assignment or if they call off because they simply do not have, they do not have the physiological energy to, to work another shift in that manner. So if the stressor remains, if the nurse is required to practice in unsafe conditions, well, then the, the threat detector just picks that up as danger. And then we remain in this perpetual state of stress, literal psychological fear. And we feel what many describe as what we're feeling is we feel tired and wired. We know and we want to do and we need to do all the things, but our body just can't. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of the functional freeze? Well, both physical and emotional symptoms emerge in response to the freeze. It can feel like living, like you're, like you're stuck inside of a glacier. It feels like maybe you're immobile and if, and it's like impossible to meet the challenge. And you might have muscle tension. You might have brain fog. You might feel a little shut down or stuck. Emotionally, you feel lost in the waves of shock and disconnection and fear and anger that crash over and over you at whim. Other symptoms include low-level anxiety, socially disconnecting or isolating from others, struggling to take good care of oneself, difficulty starting or completing tasks, and exhaustion to the point we're getting off the couch, well, it feels like running a marathon. And we start feeling disconnected or shut down from our feelings and surroundings. We start feeling a sense of numbness and disconnection from our loved ones. What once brought us happiness or joy can't really be felt through this veil of numbness. I personally have ex experienced the functional freeze and my body, and, and it feels like both the gas pedal and the brakes are like both on, 
on full tilt. And so it's like this push pull. I need, I need to do something, but I can't. And um, think of it as the, the, so when we're coming out of that, when we're coming out of that, we really need to be thinking about low and slow is the way to go because we need the gentlest, the gentlest of defrost protocols. Slowly, slowly, we need to allow some movement and some space for the energy that get, is sort of stuck in this gas pedal is slammed on, but so is the brake and that energy in between, it's just stuck within us. And so slowly we need to um, allow that to open and that energy start to move in its perfect time or manner. So don't think going for a marathon run is going to do you any help. That's just going to throw you deeper in the freeze. Maybe some gentle stretches, maybe some gentle yoga, maybe a slow stroll around the block. These are the things that to start to allow that stuck energy to start moving. And, and at any time, if you start feeling the tiniest bit overwhelmed or like the freeze is getting worse, then you know it's time to back off because you don't want to do, don't do what I did. It's like, okay, well, I'm just going to like move this energy really fast. I think I'm going to go do a 40 minute HIT workout, high intensity interval training. Let's do that. Put myself in a in a deep freeze for like a week. I think it was like closer to 10 days. So there's definitely a low and slow is the way to go approach. And and here are some strategies that you can explore if you feel like you might be in that functional freeze. So deep breathing, deep diaphragmatic breathing. When we really do that diaphragmatic breathing, it helps expand and, and engage that ventral aspect of the vagus nerve. Somatic experiencing. There's any number of somatic experiencing videos on YouTube and um, resources that are available, including including those that we do in, in my nonprofits, Break Up with Burnout Academy. We do all, we, I think we have over 100 practices that we introduce that people can really see if they resonate and align with, it, with them. With Self-compassion practices you can do, grounding practices, practicing self-awareness, challenging negative or automatic thoughts like asking as some as as this this thought comes running through it's like oh i am i am just worthless i can't even get up today challenge that thought is that true are you worthless no send that thought back can you get off the couch it feels like i can't but there's good reason for that so send that automatic thought out and then wrap wrap it back in. It's like, whew, I, I might be going through a trauma response. I might be experiencing a functional freeze. I am just going to give myself so much compassion for all that I've endured. Whew, because it's really, it's really affecting me. And, and like you would a newborn child or a, a puppy or a kitten or anything that you hold dear, you would treat it with tenderness and respect. And that's what our system is asking from us. Cognitive reframing is super important. Gratitude practices, connecting with nature in any way, anything in nature is going to be helpful. So whether you like the desert or the forest or the tundra, where wherever you take solace and and refuge in nature that's a very good thing super light exercises like those that we discussed discussed gentle yoga stretching a stroll not a power walk not at first and then any creative expressions like any art medium singing journaling doodling anything that you enjoy doing creatively will also be helpful and the list goes on from there. And remember, none of us are meant to heal alone. We are social creatures and we need, we need co-healing and co-regulation to optimally recover. This is what relational neuroscience and trans transpersonal neurobiology 
studies upon studies upon studies upon studies that could you know, <laughs> probably wrap the globe that, that tell us that this is true. And that's where my work comes in. Through my nonprofit organization, the Halen Academy, we offer Break Up With Burnout programs where you will be guided and facilitated throughout your entire recovery process with others who are doing the same. We don't just push resources out at you and expect you to go take those and go heal alone by yourself somewhere. Instead, we take each healing step with you so you can maximize and leverage your body's innate capacity for healing, including that mission critical relational aspect. So to learn more about how I and my team help nurses and healthcare professionals around the world recover from the functional freeze, traumatization and burnout, please join me in one of my free webinars. You can, we'll drop the link in the show note. It's drlorilaws.com slash webinar. Until next time, thank you. Thank you for all that you are and all that you do. I see you. I feel you, I hear you, and I am here for you. From my healer's heart to yours, and until next time, namaste.